So this week's episode of Railgun, I would say, was probably my most anticipated episode of this season to date. I mean, when you end last week with pretty much a line that was crossed that probably should never be crossed by erasing Misaka's friend's memories of her. Like, that's kind of like the ultimate taboo, I feel like, in this show, where a lot of things can happen, both brutal and just emotional, but I feel like that connection, that bond that we spent two seasons with, really forming and even seeing be formed in other versions of the anime within this universe. To cross that line, it's kind of like the ultimate taboo, I feel like. It'd be like one of the sins in a Bible if this show had one. So I was really excited for this, and I have to say they absolutely lived up to my expectations, but they also did something I wasn't really expecting, and that was a lot of decent content with Congo. I mean, she's been a character I've never disliked or overly liked. She's been a kind of neutral character for me. She has her moments, but out of all the characters in Railgun, she wasn't the one that I was going to saying, I want to see more content with her. But after this week's episode, absolutely give me as much Congo as you want because she was not only a badass, but she felt so just amazing, just as amazing as any of the central characters within Railgun, which is a very high compliment, I know, but I have to say, just seeing how she implemented herself in this story, especially when pretty much Misaka had no support or really she couldn't do shit because she could maybe, yes, which I was saying last week, what if she like showed a photo album, but really you're going to show someone who has no memories of you, it'll just confuse them and most likely will put them in either further danger or won't get them to understand what's happening and just kind of run away from you. So it kind of makes sense that she's pretty much alone, but even though she may not be the best of friends with Congo, she does have a pretty decent relationship with her so it makes total sense to kind of say like hey what happened to your sister oh you thought it was my sister absolutely uh my sister was kidnapped it just kind of sets emotion in a believable way a very natural way it doesn't seem like hand-fisted or anything like that it actually feels like there's a reason why she would implement herself into this story without making it feel like just a random plot device or something like that. I thought Kongo, just in terms of her combat abilities towards the end, was incredibly interesting. I mean, the whole idea of like those jets just kind of like turning the tides if you think, oh, well, here we go again, another character is going to get knocked out, kidnapped, we'll have to rescue them too. And I like how she was actually a really strong character in this sequence and really highlighting her abilities, but also her emotional strength. And if it wasn't for that cat, I mean, she would have wiped the floor with this guy. And maybe there will be some people saying, oh, why would you go out of your way to save a cat? There are those people in this world. It's a sad thing, but I mean, at the end of the day, not only is it Misaka's sister's cat, as far as she knows, it's also an innocent bystander. You don't want to see an animal get hurt. Like, that's kind of like the whole point of, like, judgment and just the good people in this world. You don't let anyone pretty much go away. And who would have thought there would have been a little bug flying around that was going to knock her out? I mean... She kind of wiped the floor with all those Great Danes, right? I mean, a little bug flying around or just one guy and a couple of dogs left. It really wasn't a huge threat to her until, well, she realized it was. I think next week is going to be incredibly interesting, though, because of just the rage that is in these girls' eyes. Especially after, like, Satin comes in and sees what's happening, brings in two companions. I mean, the fact that just Congo herself almost wiped the floor, but now we got two people. Like, as long as they don't get stung by that little, like, flying... B or whatever he has around, they probably could at least push him back, but it'll still be interesting because based on the preview, I generally don't watch previews, but I watched this week's one because I was like, I wonder what's going to happen, and it definitely looks flashy and badass, I have to say. I'm pretty excited for episode 6, without a doubt in my mind. But this episode, it felt like it was definitely Congo's episode to shine, and that's not a bad thing in the slightest. If this season of Railgun is going to show us more perspectives we haven't had a lot of focus on or just... You know, we've seen them before, we, they've had some spotlight, but not as important as maybe this season is going to make them, then I'm all for that. I love Misaka, I love Shirai, like I love all these characters, but if you want to give me more sideline characters, B-side characters as some people might want to call them, absolutely go for it. Because this is a pretty insane arc, it's been hyped up a lot by pretty much people who haven't even read the source material, they just heard so much hype that they themselves start hyping it up as well, right? But even without this arc in particular, like the falling arc, if this season can really start showing us even more perspectives and not just rely on the central cast, that will be a major plus in my honest opinion. As much as I love the cast in this show, I also want to see some of those other perspectives. And we got Misaki, right? I mean, that's a character who's just kind of been in the sidelines, now kind of being thrown into an antagonist role. Not a villain role. I know some people are calling her a villain. I don't really view her as a villain. She doesn't strike me as the end of the world type character, but more of a... Maybe she has a morally great conflict going on, but I doubt she's going to be an actual villain, but more of an antagonist. Like, she's a great example of someone who's been important, but not really important all at the same time, now actually given a prominent role, and we can look at Congo in this episode as well. Like, I really hope that this is a theme of this season, that more characters 
other than, say, like the Central Four or maybe the Central Five, depending on, you know, perspective of who you think also can be a, you know, a pretty important character, if not a main character. I hope that is a common theme because just based on what they've shown us over five weeks, the first few episodes, sure, was a lot more slice of life and kind of event based, but that was kind of like getting you reintroduced to the formula. Make sure you haven't forgotten these characters or shenanigans and also giving you some fun little events that were just kind of spiced up by the scientific powers that this world has. But the past two episodes have been like a pure adrenaline rush. I mean, last week's episode just set the bar of how crazy this story was going to become. And this episode just continued. And I'd say I slightly enjoyed this week's episode better than even last week. I mean, last week had a pretty emotional pull of like her being erased from her friend's memory. Like that was something that was just like a gut punch and just made you so full of rage and sorrow all wrapped up into one. But I have to say, man, I wasn't expecting to walk into this week's episode and then walk out by saying, you know what, Kongo's my favorite part. And I'm not here, like, to shit on Kongo. Like, she's a good character, but, like, she was never, like, my favorite character. She was never the one that I'm like, I want to see a thousand more scenes with her. But holy shit, I hope she recovers and gets even more rage and just strong from that kind of fall and just starts kicking some more ass. But even if, like, that's kind of, like, her entire role in this season, like, she's kind of out of commission till the end of the arc, I still appreciate what they did with her character in this episode. It really made her feel not only like her personality was more than just that kind of like, oh, ho, ho, I'm so much better than everyone else, but also kind of was like, oh, shit, you know, when the time comes and her friends are in need, she's going to rise to the occasion. And I really like that. She has this line at the beginning of the episode where basically she's like, OK, I'll find information on your sister. And then immediately it was like, actually, don't believe me, because as far as we know, I, too, could have been brainwashed. So instead of that, I'm going to bring you your sister because really, can you trust anything I say? No, but if I actually give you the person you're looking for, that will show that, you know, I haven't been manipulated or things like that. It was just a really simple moment, but it kind of sent in motion how good of an arc she was going to have in this episode. And I think they delivered it really, really well. There's a moment where basically Misaka is pretty much getting like just flustered over her little toys and things like that again. I love how they have this like little bonding moment between enemies and how even like the people are like, oh my god, they're going off on this like children bullshit again. It's those little moments. I hope they just keep introducing these frogs and just like the most random scenes because it just is like it's that cute little quirk that they have this like little passion for these little toys, these little collectibles, things like that. And I love how it just got implemented in such a natural way and how pretty much her response was, this was pretty much the most insane trap ever laid by basically playing to her desires. But I think it was really just like these two characters just shared a common interest. Like, yeah, they're trying to keep her there, but I think that was like a legitimate bonding moment or at least attempt at one. Like, that was just so great, I have to say. Railgun is hitting it out of the park. It's slapping all the right notes and I'm enjoying my time with it 100%. I mean, this episode wasn't, like, super flashy, but the flash that it did have, especially towards, like, that aerial combat and things like that, I thought was really nice, and based on next week's preview, I mean, it looks like it's gonna be pretty fun as well. I don't expect the entirety of episode 6 to be action, I think it'll probably be very similar to episode 5, a good 3-5 minutes worth of action, and then the rest being on the more adrenaline of, like, oh shit, where is it gonna go next? which is not a bad formula in the slightest. I'm really enjoying this week's episode and just the season in general. Something I like about the power system in Railgun is how even though the powers can be insane, especially for like the level fives, like we see just pretty much mass memory alteration. That's kind of ridiculous. But I like how in this episode we have Sodden who pretty much was like trying to get one of those frog keychains. I was like, wait, who am I getting this for? I like how the powers aren't perfect. They're strong, but there's ways to overcome it even without like the person deactivating their ability. It's a super simple thing that can be overlooked, but I like how when you have a character who can basically, if she wanted to, control the entire city. That is pretty much a power that if you write it with most authors, they'd be like, whoa, if we have this, it either has to be like an end boss for the entire story or there has to be a giant Achilles heel. And even though it's not a giant Achilles heel, I like how they're writing it as like, this character, yes, is being presented in a positive light for the most part, ignoring this arc, that she is someone to be trusted and she's the star student. But I like how even if you do control people, there is ways that people can naturally break free as they form a connection for how many years of this group of friends. So it's natural that when you see something that your old friend that has been erased from your memory used to love, it's natural that your mind would be like, oh, that kind of feels like deja vu. Like, why did I want this? Did I have someone that I actually cared for? And I like that. I like how it's not even just like you got to pummel her face to get this hold to be broken. Naturally, Satana, Ruiharu, you know, Shirai could break free by their own will. 
And that's something I do appreciate. It's something that it would be nice to see like three episodes, four episodes from now in the middle of an incredible sequence. You know, it's just something happens. They see something, they hear something, and that allows for a character to break free of that hold rather than just kind of throwing them at a commission and making them just kind of like mummies, just like zombies. People that aren't even the same ones that we grew up with with this anime. So I like that. It's a little thing, but it's something that I feel like it makes the power menacing but not so powerful that you feel like there's no defeating it unless you cut off the head of the snake. It's a little thing, not a lot of people will care about it, but for me, it's something that really makes the power system all the more complex without being so powerful that you just want to like bash your head and being like, this is too ridiculous. It feels like we're throwing a giant energy ball around or something to that nature. But as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below for anime original source material readers. What did you think and where do you think it's going to go next? Please, no spoilers. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and remember to hit that subscribe button if you happy new round here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.